I greet you, my brothers and sisters, in the powerful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There are messages that uh, God gave me some time ago, but um, for one reason or another, I couldn't declare them. Because when it comes to prophets, the timing must be right. There was a message that um, I was supposed to share when I was in Burundi. It was a message pertaining to the ongoing spiritual awakening which is taking place in Burundi. The Spirit of God told me when I was at the prayer rally, uh, when I attended the prayer rally early this month, that God has prepared seven churches to spearhead the revival. Seven churches and seven church leaders. All of them are men. I saw seven men in a vision carrying, you know, light, lamps, you know, being torch bearers. But uh, instead of uh, the normal torch, which you know, they were carrying like what they used to kindle the flame or to light the flame <clears throat> when there are Olympics or when there are games which are being played by many nations in their country. So I saw these seven men, they were carrying these, you know, flames with, with their handles, with a container-like thing, and a flame was burning on top of each, you know, container-like thing, or lamp, lamp stand. So they were running with these, a single frame lamp stands and uh, I saw crowds begin to follow them some of the these men of God are already attracting crowds but I saw in the spirit that four of the churches are still relatively small they are not known that much in many parts of Burundi and even beyond Burundi. It's three of the churches which are visible out of the seven. Four of the churches and four men of God, they are not that much known. I see God begin to elevate them and Burundi them. Of the four churches which are not known, two of them, <coughs> They are so grounded in intercession, in prayer and fasting that uh, according to the Spirit of God, these two churches are going to be the consolation of Burundi with their men of God, with the servants of God who are carrying the vision, who are torch bearers and pathfinders of these two ministries. Two of the seven churches are almost purely intercession ministries. Out of the seven, two of the churches or ministries are evangelistic ministries, which are geared more towards soul winning. <clears throat> so this is what I saw. These are the details that I saw. There would be a lot of jealousy, there would be a lot of name calling when the Almighty God begins to lift his work through these seven churches. But no one would be able to withstand the wave of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit says the temple the the disturbances in Burundi are temporary. They are temporary. You should not be dismayed. Continue to press in on you. Continue to pray. As you pray prayers without giving up, 
as you intercede for the country and its leadership without ceasing. I know by the Holy Spirit, I've seen in the realms of the Spirit, <clears throat> that the limitations of the enemy will be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. They are being broken in the name of Jesus Christ. So let us continue to pray, to fast, and to plead with God for Burundi. God has given us an answer of peace. Though I am seeing a brief period of uncertainty and disturbances, the Holy Spirit says after a while, things are going to settle down. Our duty as Christians is to pray and to consecrate the country unto God, to continuously stand as watchmen and women, as prophetic intercessors for Burundi. I was seeing that <clears throat> there are some groups which may try to, to form here and there to disturb the peace in the nation but the grace of God will be sufficient. There will be shakings, but as these seven churches and many other churches, as well as all Christians of goodwill, continuously pray and lift up Burundi before God together with their leadership, I perceive by the Spirit of God that all the challenges they will come to an end. There will be newer challenges which we will be able to deal with according to the grace that God has given you as the saints and the intercessors in Burundi. So it's a nation which I love. It's a Francophone nation. I'm yet to learn French. I had never gone to Burundi, but I've had a pattern to pray for Burundi for quite some time. <clears throat> I thank God that he has connected me to many lovely saints, very humble people, very welcoming, very loving. And uh, God has connected me to some of the finest intercessors that I've ever seen. When I was at the prayer rally, my faith was encouraged. It was challenged. So I say to the intercessors, the prophetic intercessors and the men and women of God in Burundi, let us continue to pray for Burundi. Whatever disturbances are taking place or are going to take place, don't be discouraged. The Holy Spirit is saying, I must remind you of what is written in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, where the Holy Spirit wrote through Paul that you and I walk by faith and not by sight. We don't walk by sight. So I believe that this message of prophecy and message of encouragement has lifted up your faith and that you will continue to hold Burundi dear to your hearts and continue to lift up your leadership before God. Lift up the president, the cabinet ministers, so that they make high quality decisions. Because it's a time of revival, it's a time of spiritual awakening in Burundi. Excuse my voice, which is a bit hoarse. I was leading prayers and declarations at the church. It was a powerful service. We saw the Spirit of God descend like never before. It was like what is described in the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 28 and 29. I pray for a strong move of the Spirit of God all over Burundi, in Puchumbura, and many other towns, cities, and places the message is a bit long. I don't normally speak long messages like this, but it's to encourage your faith, to say I love you, 
my brothers and sisters in Burundi. I love you, saints and intercessors, and all the people of Burundi. You occupy a special place in my heart. I love the way you hold prayer. You challenged my faith. When I came back, I was revived. I was revived, and I'm still being revived. You gave me a challenge when it comes to prayer. Continue to lift up the standard as I saw you doing during the prayer rally on the 4th of January this month. 2024 is your year of anointing. I'm speaking to the port of Christ. It doesn't matter whether you're in the so-called mainline churches or in the Pentecostal movement. God is moving. May God bless you.